But I want to tell you the story and most of you heard the tale of Greeks who tried to attack a city named Troy. And after 10 years of fruitless attempts, they couldn't capture the city. And they decide to do something else. They developed a strategy where they built a wooden horse, a large horse, and they sealed it and secured it really good. And they let some of their best choicest soldiers inside of the horse. And they left that horse on the territory by the city, Troy. And they departed as so to make them seem from the city and the, sailed away, but didn't sail far enough to get away from the city. Just far enough so that the city will think they got away. The city Troy felt proud that they were able to withhold Greeks for 10 years. And they felt like the Greeks accepted their defeat by building them a gift. So they all got out of the city and took this horse as a trophy of their persistence and victory. And well, what do you do with it when you get a trophy? You celebrate. So they threw a huge celebration. Every watchman didn't have to stand on the wall that night. The gatekeepers could have a day off. Everybody was involved celebrating because they received a gift from generous Greeks. Little did they know is Greeks don't give gifts that are empty and inside. And at night, the choice soldiers opened the horse, sneaked out, opened the gates, and by this time, the Greeks were already at the walls of Troy, and the city fell. Let me give you the verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says the following, Lest Satan should take advantage of of us for we are not ignorant of his devices some translations say his schemes this is what I want to talk to you today about my, my message or my thought to you today is this most of us are just like city Troy we will not have a direct contact with the devil we're more, more smarter than that we will stay away from anything that has to do with witchcraft. And Satan knows that. But he has a strategy, almost similar as the one of Greeks. It's been his strategy all the time. That when he knows that he cannot get through directly, what he does is he sends you something that comes as a form of a gift. And when you're ignorant, you think... It's empty of anything. It's just a gift. It's just a this or that. And you welcome it into your life, seeing nothing bad in it. And as you welcome it into your life, sooner or later you begin to see that life is begin to fall apart. You begin to see things are begin to be shattered because the enemy came in not as a Greek, but as a horse. Let me remind you, the first time the Bible mentions Satan or the Bible mentions his activity on this earth, it's in Genesis chapter 3. And it mentions him and it says this, and the serpent, it's talk, talking about Satan, was more cunning than any other creatures, any other animals. What does that mean? That means that Satan's number one characteristics that we must know about is this, is sneaky slicky cunning scheming not honest if you are curious and ignorant he will play you fool you and he will win if satan would have come as a dragon to adam and eve i will assure you adam would point his finger and said in the name of god out of my garden but when he came as a snake See, Adam saw snakes before. They were all around. Snake is nothing new. We've seen snakes before. When he changed a form to something Adam was familiar with, Adam and Eve continued a conversation. 
Satan rarely will come to you and me as Satan. He will come to you and me in a form that's difficult to resist without God. He clothes himself, the Bible says, a wolf in sheep's clothing.